Now, uh, today we discuss about the discrete uh, mathematical structure or subject who is CH252 public C559 discrete mathematical structure. So now first we start what is the need of this discrete mathematical structure in computer science. So we say that there is a various application of discrete mathematics in computer science. So generally there is a cryptography It is the in purpose of security we require the concept of discrete mathematics in theory of automation in compiler construction in information theory graph theory bioinformatics and pattern classification and uh, these are the fields in which we have to use the concept of discrete mathematics so the discrete mathematics application in this various field that's why we require the discrete mathematics in computer science so now what are the topics we can cover in discrete mathematics that is the propositional logic combinatorial graph theory and algebra so now in today we discuss about the propositional logic so first what is a propositional logic propositional is a we can say like that it is a sentence with declarative sentence so propositional logic in that case we can write it is a declarative sentence and declarative sentence means that they depend on the fact and fact may be true or may be false so the declarative sentence can be represented in the form of pullen algebra so pullen algebra means either in the form of one or zero one indicate for the true value zero indicate for the false value so uh, propositional logic is nothing but a mathematical notation in which we can precise meaning of the mathematical notation so we can give a declarative sentence example we write down the delhi is a capital of india so it is a declarative sentence so maybe it is true or maybe false so it is a true delhi is a capital of india so that we can say it is a declarative sentence we can write that is uh, suppose for example ki 1 plus 1 equal to 2 it is a declarative sentence so it is under the condition of declarative sentence or it is called as a propositional statement propositional statement is nothing but a declarative sentence and declarative sentence may be either true or false suppose we can write down 1 plus 2 equal to 5 of course it is a false value but it is a type of declarative sentence that's why it is called as a propositional logic so now what type of sentence which we call as a not declarative sentence so a sentence which are not declarative so for example we can write x plus y equal to z so x plus y equal to z it is a not a declarative sentence for example we can write x plus 1 equal to 2 it is also not declarative sentence so why it is not a declarative sentence because the reason is that for a certain x value the equation is true but the other value the equation become a false so for example we can say suppose x equal to 1 so 1 plus 1 equal to 2 it is the true value for x equal to 1 now we can take x equal to 2 the value become 2 plus 1 equal to 2 which is false we can take x equal to 3 it is 3 plus 1 equal to 2 which is also false so for a certain value for a certain quantity the expression will be true and for certain quantity the expression become false so that type of statement is not under the condition of declarative sentence 
So as we had learned earlier, propositional logic is a declarative sentence, and declarative sentence is represented in the form of fact. Fact may be true or may be false, but not both. The expressions which are condition of both true and false value, which are not a declarative sentence. So after the propositional logic, we can come to the part of uh, it is a rule of logic which gives the precise meaning of mathematical notation. So that is the use of the propositional logic. So now next we can come to the point of connectives. What is the meaning of connectives? So here we can take declarative sentence. This we can take as a variable propositional variable P, which indicates Delhi is the capital of India, which is a true sentence. It is called as a under declarative sentence. Connective means we can create a new proposition. From the existing two or more proposition, so that type of uh, things is called as a logical connective. So logical connective means we can take two propositions like P and Q, and based on these two propositions, we can create another proposition that is called as a R. Based on this existing two proposition, which is called as a logical connective. So when we want to create a logical connective, we need the concept of logical operator. So there is a various type of logical operators should be used in case of propositional logic. So we can come to the logical operator. What are the logical operators we are used in propositional logic? That is first most is negation. The symbol is this one, and we can also write here the truth table. So, if it's a P is a proposition, then we can take a negation P. If it is a value of true and false, the negation become it is just false and true. Now, the another one is we can take a conjunction. Conjunction is the symbol is like that. This one it is similar to the end. So the truth table is if it is a P is a proposition, Q is another proposition, and we can perform final proposition as P conjunction Q. So now we can take a for any two variable there is a number of combination values two to the power n. So we can take a four combination. One is a true true, true false, false true, and false false. Now the conjunction is similar to the end operation. When the both the truth value is true, the resultant value become true. Otherwise, it is false. Now in the case of next, we can take the disjunction. Disjunction is similar to the or operation and symbol is this one. So the truth table of this disjunction is it is a P, Q, P or Q. True, false, false, true, and false, false. Now it is similar to the OR operation. If both the value, truth value is true, then resultant value will be true. Or either one of the value become true, then resultant value become true. So here it is true, 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 and false. So another logical operator is we can use as a uh, implication. So. The next operation is implication. An implication is also called as a conditional, and the symbol is this one. So in this implication, we can write a truth table P and Q two proposition, and P implies Q is the implication. Here also we can take. False, false, true, and false, false. Now, in this implication, if both the truth value is true of two proposition variable P and Q, both the truth value is true and P implies Q is true, and if the value of P is false, no matter what the value of Q has, the resultant value become true. 
otherwise it is false. So you have to remember this rule. Uh, P implies Q is true when first condition both P and Q truth value is true and second value the P truth value is false no matter what the value of Q has. In that case, the two conditions we can satisfy both P and Q truth value is true, that P implies Q is true. Or when P value is false, no matter what the value of Q has, either become true or false, the resultant value become true. Other case, the resultant value false. So, that is the implication. It is very useful to table because based on this implication, we can also generate converse, inverse and contrapositive. So, how to generate the converse, inverse and contrapositive? We have to take the A part. In that case, we can find converse. Converse is, it is just P implies Q. Q implies P is called converse of P implies Q. B part, it is the inverse. Inverse is the negation P implies negation Q. It's called inverse of P implies Q. And now C is contrapositive. Contra positive. Here we can say negation Q implies to negation P is called contrapositive of P implies Q. So in a lot of mathematical reasoning and mathematical type logic based problem, it will be asked on the how to convert any propositional statement is given and you want to find converse, inverse and contrapositive. So you know first the formula and truth table that is the truth table and converse the implication P implies Q is given the converse is Q implies P. Inverse is negation P implies negation Q and contrapositive is negation Q implies negation P of the P implication Q. Now we have to give the few problems based on the implication. So here we can take even problem like that. The problem is this one. We can take a proposition variable B. Today is a Friday. And another proposition variable Q, it is raining today. Now we can write in the form of implication how we can write in the form of conjunction how we can write in the form of disjunction so in the form of conjunction it is simply end operation we can write the sentence today is a friday and it is raining today that is the form of conjunction in the form of disjunction we can write it is a friday or it is a raining today so how we can represent in the form of implication in the implication we can write down it today is Friday when it is raining day. So that is the P implies Q. Today is a Friday when it is raining today. So now we want to find the converse of this one. So converse is nothing but Q implies P. Q implies P say it is raining today whenever today is a Friday. That is the implication of Q implies P. Similarly, we may want to find the inverse. It is negation P implies negation Q. So it is the negation is today is not Friday, then it is not raining today. That is the inverse. Now, we want to find the contrapositive of the sentence. 
So contrapositive is negation Q implies negation P. It is not raining today wherever today is not Friday. So that is the sentence in how to be represented in the form of converse, inverse and contrapositive. Now other, another example we can take and that example is if P Ankit learned discrete mathematics structure and now Q Ankit will find a good job so now we want to represent in the form of implication conditional so the implication is P implies Q Ankit learned DMS then he will find a good job so P implies Q is Ankit learn DMS then he will find good job that is the P implies Q now we want to say you can find the converse, inverse and contrapositive so converse is Q implies P what is the Q? Ankit will find a good job whenever Ankit learn DMS so are you clear what is the meaning of converse? so now inverse inverse is it is a negation P implies negation Q where Ankit did not learn DMS then he will not find a good job and contrapositive the contrapositive means that is a negation Q implies negation P Ankit will not find a good job then un whenever Ankit did not learn DMS so that is the way in which we can how to any English sentence we can convert into the inverse converse and contrapositive and implication form so now afterwards we can discuss the how to translate the English sentence into the logical collectives so so before we can start the English sentence to logical collective we can take one example of biconditional operation uh, biconditional and that simple is this one if suppose there is a two proposition variable p and q and we can generate p implies q true true false false true and false false if both the value proposition variable the truth value become true then the p biconditional q become true so both the truth value will be same here in the case of true true it will be true and in both the truth value will be same in ff it become true otherwise it is false in case of biconditional operation so now we can give an example of biconditional operation so if you can uh, we can give them one uh, good example in which we can take you can take a fight you can take a flight and you buy a ticket that is a B proposition Q you buy a ticket so now this is a true proposition variable P and implies Q P1 is you can take the flight and you buy a ticket so in this case that type of proposition is belong to implication or by conditional or so whenever you can take a flight you must buy the ticket so if and only if you buy the ticket then you can take the flight so that type of statement is represented in the form of by conditional statement so the sentence is you can take a flight if and only if you buy a ticket so that sentence is indicated for the by conditional type statement so now the next operation is uh, we can call it as a XOR operator XOR or we can also call it as a exclusive disjunction and that symbol is the XOR symbol is this one and we can also represent in the form of mathematical discrete mathematics that symbol is exclusive disjunction so in this case there is a two proposition variable P and Q and this is the XOR 
the both the value is true, true false, false true and false false. So here, in this XOR case, either one of the values become true, the resultant value become true. So, and both the truth value will be same at that time, the XOR operation, resultant XOR operation value become false. So here the truth value is same, it become false, it become false. So here, in that case, it is true. It is also called as an exclusive distinction or also called as an XOR. So that type of logical operator we can discuss now. So now we can come to the how the English sentence we can convert into the connectives. So here we can take a convert English sentence into connectives in the form of logical connectives. So we can take an example. So the example is you can access the internet from the campus. The English sentence is you can access the internet in campus if you are computer science major or if you are not freshman so the condition is that if you can access the internet in campus if you are computer science major or you are not a freshman how to represent in the form of logical connectives so this sentence we can convert into the propositional variable so first we can take a proposition a you can access the internet in campus the p proposition you are a computer science major and c proposition you are freshman so here you have to remember this one point whenever the expression can be represented in the negation form but you can convert into the proposition variable you can represent in the form of not in the negation form so here we can convert the three proposition variable A, B, C. So here the meaning is that you can access the internet in campus if you are computer science major or if you are not freshman. So there is a two condition either B or negation C. B means you are computer science major and you are not a freshman. So C is a freshman so you can convert B and negation C. So now, how it will be represented? You can access the internet in campus if that means that is a condition. You are a computer science major and you are not a freshman, then you can access the internet in the campus. So here we can write A implies B or negation C. So that sentence we can represent in this logical connective. So how to convert any English sentence into the logical connective? Now we can take another problem. The next problem is automated reply cannot send. Automated reply cannot send when file system is full. Automated reply cannot send when a file system is full. So here automated reply can be sent and another file system is full okay so we can take a two proposition here that is the one proposition is a file system full and another it is automated reply cannot send so automated reply cannot send so here we can say p proposition automated the reply can send and Q proposition file system is full so we can convert the Q implies negation P when file system file system is full then the automated reply cannot be sent 
So the condition is that the automatic reply cannot send whenever the file system is full. So file system is full is a Q proposition, and whenever it is P, automatic reply send. The automatic it is nothing but the conclusion, and it is the premises. So the basic conclusion is automatic reply cannot be sent. We can write in proposition variable automatic reply send in the form of negation. So that is the any English sentence we can convert into the logical connectives. So that is how the English sentence convert into the logical connectives. So now we can come to the next point, which is precedence of the logical operator. So precedence of logical operator. So the first is the negation. The precedence is one conjunction, then disjunction, implication, and biconditional. So it is called as a negation. It is a conjunction, disjunction, implication, and biconditional. So precedence means the priority of the operator in which can be solved first. The so, those operator which can solve first is called priority of the operator. The priority of the operator means if there is a n number of operator we are using for solving the expression, how it will be identified which operator can be solved first? That is called the precedence. So in the logical operator, highest precedence is the negation, then conjunction, after disjunction, then implication, and by conditional. Next, we can discuss what is a well-formed formula. Well-formed formula that is also called as a WFF. A well-formed formula, a statement that cannot be broken down into further step is called as an atomic statement. So, we can say a proposition variable P today is raining day. So that proposition variable cannot be break down into the further step. That is called as an atomic statement. That is called as an atomic statement. So, a well-formed formula has contained the following properties. First, the well-formed formula must be atomic statement, atomic statement must be well-formed formula. Second, if P is a well-formed formula, then negation P also well-formed formula. So, P and Q are the well-formed formula. We can take another P and Q two proposition variable are well-formed formula. Then P and Q, P and negation Q are also in the case of well-formed formula. So these are the properties in which say a statement that cannot be broken down into the smaller statement is called the atomic statement. So these are the properties of the well-formed formula. A statement must be in well-formed form. Atomic statement is a well-formed formula. If a P proposition variable is well-formed, then negation P also in well-formed formula. And P and Q are well-formed formula. Then P and Q, P and negation Q, negation P and Q, negation P and negation Q. Those are in case of well-formed formula. So the thing is, in the case of well-formed formula. So we can take an example of well-formed formula P and Q and R. It is in the case of well-formed formula. Now, but in the case of P or Q and R, it is not in the case of is not well-formed formula, but it is a well-formed formula. So now, next we can discuss the topic the tautology.
Tautology means a statement that is generate the truth value of true for all the combination. That is called as a tautology. So we can take one example. We can just take V and negation P. If P is the value of true and false, negation P is a value of false and true. We can take P and negation P. True and false, it is true. False and true, it is true. So now the resultant become both the, all the combination, the value should be generated as a true. So both the value is true, then it become called as a tautology. So the definition is that a statement is said to be tautology if it is true for if it is true for all combination if it is true for all the combination that is called as a tautology that is called a tautology now the next term we can call as a contradiction so contradiction is just reverse of the tautology when all the a statement is said to be a contradiction if the it is all the false value of all the combination is called as a contradiction. So we can just give the example if it is false for all combination including variable itself is called just like p and negation p. If p either there is two value true and false negation p it is false and true and p and negation p if true and false become false and false and true it is also becoming false so in that case we can say both the combination two combination the resultant value become false so it is called as a contradiction so now it is a tautology, it is a contradiction and third term is that called as a contingency so contingency is that if it is a combination if in the combination of all the value some value is true and some value become false it is called as a contingency so contingency means we can say some value true and some value false it is nothing but we can say combination of both true and false is called as a contingency. So these are the three terms the tautology, contradiction and contingency. Suppose uh, there is an expression is given and you can find whether it is contained in tautology, contradiction and contingency. So you can just with the help of either with the help of truth table you can generate the true value or Based on the law of logic, you can also simplify whether it is a tautology or contradiction or contingency. So, now the next topic we can discuss that is called as a law of logic. So before we start into the law of logic, we can take some logical equivalence relation, we can some brief about the logical equivalence. In logic equ logical equivalence means P implies Q, it is equivalent to negation P or Q. P by conditional Q, it is equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. How? We both are the logical equivalent. We can one by one it will prove. We can take a P and Q two proposition variable and find P implies Q. If there are four values of combination true true, true false, false true, and false false. P implies Q says when both the truth value is true, then P implies Q is true. And when the value of P become false, the, no matter what the value of Q has, it becomes true. Otherwise, it is false. So we can terminate this formula. Now, 
Now next one we can find negation P. So it is negation P. It is just reverse of P. It is false, false, true, and true. Now we can find the value of negation P or Q. Now negation P is this one and Q is this one. We can take all operation false and true become true. False and false, false. True and true, true. True and false, true. Now we can find out that this P implies Q and negation P or Q in every combination the value becomes same. Here we can take true, false, true, false, true, false, true, true, and true, false, true, true. In both the case the value becomes same. Then that's why we can say the P implies Q is equal to negation P or Q. That is the first one. Similarly, we can find the another equivalent relation, and that relation is says the second one P by conditional Q equal to P implies Q and Q implies P. So we can take two proposition P and Q, and now it is a P by conditional Q. The value is true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. In this case, by conditional operations, both the truth value is true, then resultant value become true, and both the truth value will be same. That is false, false, and true, true. It become true. Otherwise, it is false. So now, next we can find P implies Q. It is true, false, true, true, and Q implies P. That is, it is the value of Q is true. And the, whatever the value of Q is false, no matter what the value of P has, in case of Q implies P. So in first case it is true, second case it is true, and fourth case it will become true. But in third case it is false. Now we can find P implies Q and Q implies P. In this case we can perform an operation. It become true, false and true. It is a false, false and true. Now we can find that this P implies Q, this symbol, and this value becomes same. Both the value becomes same. That means we can say P by conditional Q is logically equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. Now in same form, the we are using the law of logic concept, which is. The sum term which is logically equivalent to the another term. So there is a certain law we are using in which we can simplify the expression in easier way. So the law of logic in which there is a certain law we are using, and one by one we can discuss the law. So first law we can using law of logic, or we can say logically equivalent. Logically equivalent. So first law is idempotent law. So idempotent law says P and P equal to P and P or P equal to P. You can just check it. How it will be? Idempotent law should be work. We can take P. There is two value, true and false, and we can also perform with the same P, true and false, and we can perform P and P. It is true and it is false. It is nothing but equivalent to. P. So we can say P and P equal to P in similar P or P equal to P. Now next law is the second number law, which is called as a commutative law. And commutative law, we can say P and Q logically equivalent to Q and P, or P and uh, P or Q equal to Q or P. Now third law is associative law. Associative law says P and Q and R equal to P and Q and R, or P or Q or R is equal to P or Q or R. So that is called as a associative law. After the associative law, we can come to the distributive law.
So next, the distributive law says it is a P and Q or R, which is equivalent to P and Q or P and R, or P or Q and R, which is equivalent to P or Q and P or R. So that law, it is called as a distributive law. So after the distributive law, we can come to the identity law. So in case of identity law, we use P and T equal to what? And P and F equal to what? And P or T equal to what? And P or F equal to what? So we can just find out if suppose the P value is either true and false and we can perform with the T and T what will be the value of P and T? It is true, it is false which is nothing but equivalent to P Now P and false if both the value become false then what the resultant value become? So here we can find P and F true and false become false and false and false false it is nothing but false so here we can generate F P or T P is true and false and T now we can find P or T it is true and false true false and false sorry it is a P now we can perform the truth value both true P or T or it is true so in that case we can value is true P or false if suppose we can take the both values false now the P or F become it is true it is false it is equivalent to nothing but equivalent to P so the that concept you should know identity law P and T equal to P and these things after the identity law we can come to the item potent law item potent law we can already discuss now we can discuss the sixth one is complement law complement law says negation of negation t equal to t negation f equal to true and negation of t equal to false so these are the complement law and p and negation p equal to f you can also generate the same formula with the help of uh, this thing okay, how to generate the formula p that is true and false negation p is false and true now p and negation p it true and false false and it is false both are false in case of p or negation p it will be generated either true and false negation p become false and true and P or negation P it is true and true so in case of P or negation P it become a true so that is the complement law so now the next law is called as a De Morgan law that is also very important law and that law says if negation of P and Q which is logically equivalent to negation P or negation Q and negation P or Q logically equivalent to negation P and negation Q so these are, there are total similar laws in which we can identify how their value of left hand side which is equivalent to right hand side so based on the law of logic we can solve any expression in easier way so we can come to the few problem based on the law of logic so how the law can be applied for solving the problem so we can take one problem so that without using the table without write the truth table you can solve negation p implies q negation p implies q is equivalent to is equivalent to negation of the term is 
uh, the term is P and negation Q. It is equivalent to P and negation Q. So, how to solve this problem? We can take a negation of P implies Q, which is equivalent to P and negation Q. So, as we know, the P implies Q is equivalent to negation P over Q. So we can substitute value and apply the demodern theorem here in the negation P and Q and we can solve the problem. How? Here, here we can take negation implies negation P or Q. Now we can apply the demodern theorem. So first we can simplify, apply demodern theorem. Negation P or Q is nothing but negation of negation P and negation Q. As we know, that law is called as a complement law. Negation of negation P is nothing but what is the complement law? Complement law says negation of negation P equal to P. And De Morgan theorem says negation of P or Q equal to negation P and negation Q. So here we can say P and negation Q. So that is the which is equivalent to right hand side. So that is the way in which we can apply only the theorem is De Morgan and complement law. Similarly, we can solve the few problems of that is P implies Q implies R. P implies Q implies R, which is equivalent to P and Q and R. Which is equivalent to P and Q or R. So, how to solve this problem? So again, it is a two implication here in the left hand side equation, uh, expression and right hand side P implies Q P and Q implies R. So we can take a leftmost portion P implies Q implies R. Now, as we know, as we know, P implies Q equal to negation P or Q. Substitute the value here in the case of this one. So we can find the acute answer in Q, negation Q or R, and then first we can place P implies negation Q or R. Then again apply the same theorem. It is negation P or in bracket negation Q or R. So now we are using the associative law. Now using associative law, we can write negation P or negation Q or R. As we know, associative law says P or Q or R equal to P or Q or R. So here we can apply the associative law. It is negation P or Q or R. Now. We can again apply in this case the modern theorem. So when we can apply the de modern theorem, it is we can apply de modern theorem. We say it is negation P and Q or R. Now after negation P or Q and R, it can also simplify in the case of in this case we can also simplify in the part of P implies Q implies R so now we can again apply the distribution law uh, P implies Q implies R it is when we can simplify this term it is again generated the negation of P and Q or R so that is the required form and we can say P implies Q implies R equal to P and Q implies R. So now this type of problem we can solve based on the law of logic in which we can apply the associative model law, distributive law. So we can take even more example in which how to solve this problem so that is more clear about the concept. So now the next problem is negation P 
that is the negation of P and and P and Q negation P and P or Q P or Q implies to Q is tautology. We want to generate that equation is a tautology. That means either tautology previously we can discuss how to generate based on the truth value. Either expression we can generate the truth value. Suppose more than two and three variables are there, we can also solve based on the law of logic. So here, what we can do, we can first convert into the implication form. So now, what we can do here, only implication is this one, and as we know, P implies Q equal to negation P or Q. As we can told earlier, and we can solve. So this is the logical equivalent to this one. So now we can apply this term into the equation. Here we can find negation p. So this one is completely is called as a negation p, and it is called as a q. So here negation negation p and p or q or q. So that is the equation. After we can first step we can apply here. Then we can use negation of this term. Now. Afterwards, here we can also apply the De Morgan theorem because it is a negation P and this is term is called as a Q. So we can say apply De Morgan's theorem. We say that it is a negation of negation P or negation P or Q or Q. So negation of negation. Here we can again apply complement law. So it is called as a P or negation P or Q or Q. Now in this case we can again apply the De Morgan theorem. So apply De Morgan. Because it is a negation P or Q, it is negation P and negation Q. So now it is called as a P or negation P and negation Q or Q. So now after that, here we can also apply the distributive law. Now after this one, we can apply. Distributive law. It is called as a P or negation P. It is apply the P or negation P and P or negation Q and or Q. So now P and negation P. What is the value? We can also know it is a P true and false. Negation P is false and true. And P or negation P, P true and false become it is a true and it is true. So in both the case, it is value is true. And P or negation Q or Q. So now here in this case, we can also. Which law we can applicable? Here we can also use the associative law. So after we can associative law, we can take the portion P or Q or negation Q. So in that case, we can also uh, apply. This is T and this one is nothing but we can call as a P or negation Q or Q. Now apply associative law. So after applying the associative law, the associative law says P or Q or R equal to P or Q or R. So here we can apply P or negation Q or Q. And negation Q or Q is nothing but we can call it as a it is a truth. P or negation Q or Q. So. 
it is the value we can generate p over negation q over q negation q over q we can here we can solve p or negation q or q here q value is either true or false and negation q it is false and true negation q or q it is generated as a true and false which is nothing but uh, it is a true and it is also in the case of true in both the value it is true so p or true and p or true we can create that is a p value true and false along with true value it is p or true it is generated both true which is equivalent to true so it is called as a when final generate the result is true it is called as a tautology so we can prove this equation based on we can apply various law of logic first de morgan theorem then again apply complement law de morgan theorem then distributive law associative law and finally we can apply the associative law then we can generate the answer is tautology so now in today's class we can discuss about the basic concept about the law of logic so in next class we can discuss about the conjunction form and destruction law of form thank you